the Kansas State Wildcats and Kansas State last year. Uh, very interesting team. I think that if if Skylar Thompson had not gotten hurt, I think they probably could have been uh, really good last year. I mean, they went eight and five, had a good bowl win over uh, over LSU. Now, obviously, that was a flawed LSU team. Chris Kleiman is doing some good stuff here. Again, seven and five in the regular season, they were seven point one and four point nine as far as post game win expectancy goes. So that's something. Um, I mean, it's just dead on. Like they were exactly what you would expect them to be. Offense was really good. The defense was lacking a bit. They were number 32 in PPA per drive on offense, number 88 in PPA per drive on defense. Uh, this is another one of those weird ones when you look at the numbers. 51 in PPA margin, number 26 in net points per drive. Those should be closer together, and yet these were uh, way off, way off. So total plays per game for this team, I mean, they ran at the slowest pace uh, you could possibly come up with. They didn't have to defend a whole lot of plays on defense because the offense didn't run a lot of plays. They they ran the ball a lot. Um, you're going to miss Skylar Thompson, I think. Like, I really, really think. Uh, even though you do have a talented guy coming in, a guy that has played, that's got experience, and Adrian Martinez from Nebraska, I still think you're going to have some issues here. Returning production is 58%. That's number 84 in the country. The offense has 66% coming back. The defense, only 50%. So you're going to miss some dudes that had gotten pretty solid uh, under the defensive coordinator, uh, Klanderman. Let's start off with the offense here. Kleiman let go of his longtime offensive coordinator, Courtney Messingham, to promote Colin Klein. Now, you did get to see Klein in the bowl game, and he took some chances early. He shifted the run-pass ratio in the bowl game from 59% run-to-pass to only 55%. Does that mean anything? Who knows? Who knows? We'll see what it looks like this year. You got a big change in quarterback. Again, Adrian Martinez comes in. You know, what is that going to mean for what this team was capable of doing by taking care of the football, not beating themselves, et cetera? Because Adrian Martinez was kind of known for that, right? He it just, okay, so we'll just look at the numbers. Nebraska was number 71 in giveaways per game, and Kansas State was number 10 in giveaways per game. Like Skylar Thompson and that bunch did not turn the football over very much at all. Is that a culture thing? Is that something that they can teach? Or is Adrian Martinez just what we've seen out of him in Scott Frost's offense? That's going to be a huge, huge thing as far as this offense goes. Running back Deuce Vaughn is back along with the wide receivers Brooks and Knowles. Uh, only two offensive linemen are coming back. Again, I want to see what Klein looks like as far as his play calling. I want to see Adrian Martinez and whether or not he's going to... Uh, be more secure with the football this year. I think that's going to be a big thing. As far as defense, it should be pretty solid again. Like I know that they've only got 50% returning production, but Glanderman has found a way to make them okay, right? And again, they need to improve number 88 PPA per drive. They're bringing back playmakers like the linebacker Green and the defensive end, and Udike Uzoma. Hopefully I said that right. If I didn't, you can correct it in the comments. <laughs> Uh, the front seven should be pretty solid here. They were number 21 in rushing success rate allowed last year. That's pretty awesome. Secondary was a weak point. They were number 96 in passing PPA, number 97 in passing success rate allowed. They're losing all but three regulars, and they are bringing in three transfers here. So that's going to be interesting to see what they look like. But again, I got a lot of trust in them to be able to figure this thing out. They're projected favorites in only six games. They've got nine toss-ups. Again, nine games where the projected final is going to be within eight points, which is, uh, again, this whole conference is like that. Like, I think this whole conference is just kind of up in the air. Keys to the season here, you got to make sure the quarterback, Martinez, is comfortable. Don't put him in positions to fail, kind of like what he had happen in Lincoln. He was 4-17 and 17 in one-score games. Can you turn him around? That's going to be a key. Uh, another key, defense needs to get secondary transfers to gel early because the pass defense was the soft spot last year. And then third, again, I want to see what Klein looks like on offense. The OC change was incredibly unexpected. Their success rate was number 25 in the country overall. And yet, they were only number 100 in scoring opportunities, number 64 in points per scoring opportunity. I don't even know how you get to that point where you are number 25 in the country in success rate, 
and yet you cannot get inside the opponent's 40-yard line. Like, they just beat themselves too many times. Turnover margin was number 43. Penalties per game, number 18. Those are pretty decent. They just, their drives stalled, which is just weird to think about. Uh, Their win total is 6.5 this year. It's juiced to the over at minus 140. I think that this is a sleeper contender here. I think Adrian Martinez getting into a culture like this could be really, really good. I don't think that they ask him to pass a whole lot unless Klein decides to do something crazy. But if you you use the wheels that are on this kid and you don't put him in a position to fail, I think he can do big, big things. I've got him going 9-3. and three. Now, I've got three losses just all in a row, Oklahoma State, Texas, and at Baylor. But again... Anywhere from seven and five to ten and two, I think is doable for this bunch. I've got them at nine and three. I think that they can compete for a spot in the Big Twelve title game. I like what Kleiman's doing. I think he's a great coach. I like the culture he's built. I like the identity that his football team plays with. I think this is a really, really good football team, and I think they got a chance to be really good this year. So that's the direction that I'm going with them. Nine and three for Kansas State might be a little high. But, hey, I'm just throwing out prognostications uh, like crazy here. So, <laughs> 9-3 and three for Kansas State is what I have on this one. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.